Temple being led again this year by outstanding sophomore Mark Bacon, one of the great players in the nation. Bacon is averaging 19 points a ball game and chipping in with solid defense as well. And he gets great help up front from senior forward Mike Breezewick. The 6'7 forward is averaging 18 points and five rebounds a ball game. Tonight, they lead Temple against the George Washington Colonial going to the Temple Owls for tonight. Temple takes on George Washington at Lenning 10 Conference Play. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred White. Our analyst tonight is Clark Kellogg. And Clark Temple, uh, George Washington Colonials are suffering a very painful season here. They've only won one ball game. It's probably too late for moral victories. They have to play for pride down the stretch now. Hope they can get a few wins to make the offseason a little bit brighter. No question about it. It's very frustrating when you've had the season George Washington has had. But something that can take some of that frustration out of the season is to finish on a positive note. And none better would come with the win tonight going into the tail end of their season. They are a talented young ball club capable of winning some more games this year. Temple, on the other hand, playing for a number. They've won 12 ball games. They're playing for whatever number of wins could get them in the NCAA tournament. No question about it. That's the big picture, and that's what they're shooting for, so they can't afford to lose a game that they feel as though they should win on their home floor. Let's talk about the keys of the game tonight. First of all, for George Washington. Well, George Washington is a perimeter shooting team. They're going to have to shoot the ball extremely well from the perimeter. Glenn Sidney, a major factor in that. But more importantly, Fred, I think, is that they're going to have to get off to a good start. When you're struggling, it's so important to get off to a good start to kind of fuel the confidence. And what about for Temple here tonight? Well, Temple, I think they need to establish an inside game with Dwayne Caldwell, who's really coming to his own offensively, because that will allow them to get better high-percentage shots at the offensive end. And if you like three-point shooting, you're going to love this basketball game here tonight because both these teams will shoot it from three-point range. The matchup in Philadelphia again tonight. Temple and George Washington, and we'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. Lead announcer, Mar Bakra. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to McGonagall Hall as the Atlantic 10 Conference presents tonight's game featuring the George Washington Colonials versus the Temple Owls. Here are tonight's starting lineups. First for the George Washington Colonials. At forward, a six foot six junior from Willingboro, New Jersey, number 24, Mike Jones. The other forward, a six foot eight freshman from Kingston, North Carolina, number 33, J.J. Hudak. At center, a six foot 11 freshman from Severna Park, Maryland, number 50, Clint Holtz. At guard, a six foot one freshman from Gastonia, North Carolina, number 11, Rodney Patterson. The other guard is a six foot six sophomore from Tacoma Park, Maryland, number 42, Lynn Sidney. The George Washington head coach is John Huster. And now the Temple University starting lineup. At forward, a six foot seven senior from Morrisville High in Morrisville, Pennsylvania, number 32, Mike Breezewick. The other forward, a six foot six sophomore from Roman Catholic High in Philadelphia, number 10, Ernest Pollard. At center, a six foot 11 sophomore from Cardoza High in Queens Village, New York, number 31, Dwayne Coswell. At guard, a six foot seven freshman from West Philadelphia High School, number 15, Mick Kilgore. And at guard, a six foot five sophomore from Buena Vista High in Saginaw, Michigan, number 12, Mark Macon. The Temple University head coach is John Cheney. Your officials are... There you have the starting lineups for both these teams, George Washington and Temple getting closer to tip-off, and we'll be back with tonight's game right after this. Here. Mike Jones back in the starting lineup after battling knee problems has started the last two games for George Washington. He'll jump center against freshman Nick Kilgore. Coswell does not jump for Temple. And George Washington gets the basketball. Sidney gets it right back to Rodney Patterson, who's been in a bad shooting slump, and they really need to get him out of it. Well, he's really struggling with his confidence from the perimeter, 4 of 28 in the last few ball games, and he's starting to think about it a little bit, which is really dangerous. These clubs love to shoot it from the perimeter. Both of these teams, I think this is kind of an amazing stat, they each take 31% of their shots from three-point country. And there's a three to try, and Patterson does get it started. 
with a three. That's one way to break out of a slump, knock down your first shot. That's got to give him plenty of confidence to start this ball game. Like he shot it off balance, nearly got it blocked, but it went. That's how it happens sometimes. When you've been struggling, you need to make one of those tough, long-distance shots to get you going. He had hit just one of his last 14 three-point attempts and gets that one down to start the game tonight. So George Washington breaks on top, 3-0. Mark Macon, Mick Kilgore wide open for a three. It's too strong off the back of the rim. Macon keeps it alive to Breeswick from the baseline. The shot good. Well, you can't give him that type of time. He's an excellent standstill shooter. Temple got two people wide open on that same sequence. 3-2, George Washington by a point. And we'll see how the Colonials decide to attack this thing now. Sit. Well, both teams have started out in zone-type defense. Rodney Patterson way outside, and the Colonials look very patient on this position. Sidney takes it to the circle. Tudoc, Sidney at the top of the key. It's a three-point shot, and he got it. Well, so far, the Colonials have scored on both possessions, and that's certainly something they wanted to do coming in here tonight, get off to a good start offensively. Pollard kicked it back outside. Nick Kilgore, the 6'8 freshman who can play three positions for his Temple team. Macon from the deep corner, shot no good, and the rebound to Rodney Patterson. Here comes George Washington, up by four. The Colonials have played a lot of good teams tough for 20, 30 minutes. They just had trouble finishing the game, Park. Well, they're, they're playing so hard to stay with teams that they usually don't have enough left to get over the hump when it becomes a close game down the stretch. And they're, all, they're also awful young. I mean, these guys start three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior, and that comes into play late in ball games against good teams. Patterson off the screen, baseline, Hudock. And shot it over the bucket. He got rid of the shot in a hurry, and it's out of bounds. It'll belong to George Washington. John Kuster, who himself is a young head coach in his fourth year at the helm of the Colonials. Well, if you want to get some gray hairs as a head coach, I'm sure he can tell you about what this season has done to him. But he said the kids have been really positive and maintained a good attitude, and that certainly has to rub off on the coaching staff. And it's a credit to them, the coaching staff, that these guys continue to play hard each time out on the floor. Well, he's been very positive. They have Ellis McKinney sitting out. They've had a number of injuries this year. Sidney, another three. And Glenn Sidney has hit two three-point goals, and it's nine to two, George Washington, in the early going. Tough way to make a living, though, isn't it? Three-point shots. It really is. Eventually, it'll come and haunt you. That's why you have to sprinkle in a little inside play right now, though. Three for three from behind the arc for the Colonials. But you need to sprinkle in just a bit of inside play and maybe some easy scores off transition to keep it going. Temple doesn't look real crisp on offense in their first couple of possessions, but Ernest Pollard hits a turnaround jumper off the baseline. And it's 9-4, to four, George Washington. There's Temple. a little full-court pressure here, Fred. Something that bothered the Colonials last time they played Temple. Patterson got a little careless with it, but Jones picks it up. The left-handed shot goes up and off the back of the rim, but he's fouled. Temple leads this series 24 wins to 7. The Owls have won 13 straight, including a game at George Washington earlier this year. They won that ball game 80-68. It was a pretty good game. Really was a good game. George Washington played Temple tight throughout the first half. It was only a two-point game, but the pressure that we just saw on that last possession displayed by Temple, that really kind of turned the game around at the beginning of the second half back on the 15th of January. That foul was on Ernest Pollard, the first foul of the game. Jones' free throw attempt rolls off the rim. He has struggled at the line. He's a 53% free throw shooter. Has been bothered by tendonitis in his knee all year. Max Blank has a hamstring problem. Brian Royal an Achilles problem. As McKinney is out for the year with the stress fracture in the foot. So the Colonials know adversity. Oh, too well. Pollard along the baseline. And the ball is out of bounds, belongs to George Washington again. Well, you made an excellent point, Fred. Here in the early going, Temple, really not very smooth. Here we get a look at Pollard. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know if he actually, his foot went out of bounds, but it didn't touch the floor. He actually avoided stepping on the line. Boy, a tough call that time. Now we almost got in the game, Nathan and Kilgore. Trapping Patterson, knocking the ball loose up here, but it still belongs to George Washington. 16-25 left in our first half. Well, I talked to the coaches about Glenn Sidney. They said he's starting to do the little things, penetrating dish. He's a tremendous athlete, starting to understand the little things that are going to make him better and his teammates better. And he started off here quickly with the three-point shot. Macon with the near interception, saved by Sidney. 
and Macon's a tough defender to go with that marvelous offensive ability he has. And back to Sidney, I think he has a lot of talent. If you can surround him with good players, a couple of veterans, I think you're going to see one great basketball player probably in time. Oh, I think so, too. He's got tremendous athletic ability. He's a little raw right now, but as he learns the game and gains more confidence, he's going to be a handful. John Randolph whistled for a foul along the baseline. His first, the second on Temple. George Washington has not committed a foul yet. And we have timeout taken here. This timeout comes with 15.49 left in the first half. Temple off to a slow start, and George Washington leads by five. Here tonight on the Temple bench. Well, I kind of like that. It's a little different. Very different. I don't know if there's another coach in the country that sports the, the loose tie and the sweater look. I don't either. They're kind of second it for a while. I don't know if he still does. Don Cheney says, why run a good sport coat? I sweat so much, I always soak them. I'll just go with a sweater. And it does look comfy. And one year, the Iowa coaches went in warm-ups. Right, George Rodman. That's, that's right, he sure did. And the Vanderbilt coaches one year wore golf shirts and slacks for the game. There's an offensive stick back. That time it was Sean Randolph that got it down for Temple. Temple now has hit three out of six shots on the floor. George Washington is three for four. All three baskets have been from three-point country. Glenn Holtz in a little trouble. Gets the ball to Glenn Sidney. He gets by Breeswick. Takes it inside. Tried to scoop it up. And Coswell caused him to miss. Mark Macon quickly up court to Breeswick. Down inside. Randolph turned around. Jumping. Coswell had a hand on it. And Sidney comes away with it. The Colonials on the attack, sitting to the top of the circle to Patterson. And Macon immediately comes out, covers Patterson, knocks the ball loose, and Patterson touched it last. Well, Macon is tough. Oh, man, he's right up on you with that great quickness. He's got excellent size in the backcourt. And when he gets on you like that with this quickness, he's going to make it tough for any guard. And Clarkie's 6'5", and he has that classic get low and spread out stance, and he takes up a lot of space in front He gets after you defensively. 14.35, left in the first half. Temple down three. Kilgore from the circle. It's in and out. And the rebound taken away by George Washington. Rodney Patterson, the point guard, comes up with it. And John Kuster shouting instructions to him as he comes by the Colonial bench. 9-6, George Washington. Sidney. The Colonials have not been able to get the ball inside yet. Oates working in the lane. They're going to need to try to penetrate a little bit. Right now, they're just passing the ball out on the perimeter. They need to try to probe. It looks like Temple's in a 3-2 zone right now. They're doing an excellent job of it because they're forcing George Washington out on the floor further than they want to be. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. They haven't been to the top of the circle yet. Now they have, but they kick it back out to Hudock. Patterson loses it off the foot. They chase it down from the center circle, and they fire one. For McKay, I don't mean to laugh at Mike Jones, but he looked up and saw the shot clock and launched one. The adrenaline was pumping, and he shot a clear over the apparatus down Not there. only did he look at the shot clock, he aimed that one at the shot clock. <laughs> the crowd yelling air ball, I'd leave that one alone. There's the field goal shooting so far. Phil Gore. Oh, nice cross-court pass inside. And off, the shot's in and out. Rebound, Coswell takes it back up and misses. And look at Jones go up and take command, and the Colonials turn it over. They tried to get the ball to Rodney Patterson, and they miss Connect. Those but are the kinds of mistakes that George Washington cannot make. In no Minnesota. question about it. They almost have to play a perfect basketball game in terms of rebounding, turnovers, good shot selection to give themselves a chance to win. And those types of errors certainly don't bode well for the Colonials. Well, the other thing, if you're going to run 30 to 35 seconds of shot clock when you get there, why be in a hurry to get it there? <laughs> Good point. Just take your time with a Bracewick from three-point country, and that one ties the game at 9-9. Mike Bracewick has five points now. Full court pressure now by Temple. Sidney, he's really been plagued by turnovers this year. Puts a pass down to Hudock in the corner, back out to Sidney. Three-point shots on the way, off the rim. And there's going to be a foul along the baseline. I think they got Mike Jones for pushing off in there. Trying to clear, clear, carve out some space for himself inside. He does it well, but that time got caught. Here we'll get a chance to see the push. Three-pointer on the way by Sidney. Back of the iron. And there he is rooting him out with the lower body. Just a little too much thrust. He got called for the foul. Now Temple with a chance to go in front. Breeswick, three-point shot. Mike Breeswick has eight points in the early going here. And Temple up by three points. The Owls first lead of the night. That pressure appears to be bothering George Washington now. Patterson trapped, loses the ball. Kilgore picks it up. He's got Randolph. John Randolph has four. And a five-point lead to Temple, and they have hit George Washington with a quick burst here. 
And now there's going to be a foul against Mick Kilgore. Kilgore, the freshman, a 6'7 freshman from West Philadelphia High School. The Public League Player of the Year here in Philadelphia last year. He's quite a talent. Here we look at Rodney Patterson. Here's the push by Kilgore, just a little hand check. But I think Rodney's got to put his hand, his head down a little bit more and just try to beat it with the dribble. He's got enough quickness and ball handling skill, and that'll force the defense to adjust to him after he beats the initial guy, and then he can make a pass to a more open teammate. Temple has scored 12 straight points and taken a 14 to 9 lead here. Peter Young is in the George Washington lineup. Clint Holtz out, so the Colonials lost a little bit of size in the middle right now. Sydney ball deflected by Breezewick. Max Blank is in also for George Washington. Patterson to Jones near the corner. Well, the Owls very active in this 3-2. They're doing a nice job with it. And George Washington, on the other hand, Fred, just a little too tentative. They're on their heels. They're not aggressive enough right now. Mark Macon got a hand on him again. The ball will be George Washington's when we come back. Time out here with 11.51. We have 11.51 left in our first half, and Temple in front of George Washington now, 14 to nine. The Owls have scored 12 straight points. George Washington has not scored now for nearly five minutes. We've got to figure out a way to attack this 3-2. Temple doing an excellent job with it. Everybody's active, hands and feet moving well. Oh boy. Sydney uh, Kilgore and Sydney exchange chicken wing or elbows, if you will. Reese Wick at the baseline and Blank fouls him. Five turnovers charged now to George Washington in this ball game. Max Blank commits the foul. Here's a drive by Vreeswick. This is the first time I've seen Vreeswick do this. He's noted as a standstill shooter. Nice strong move inside. Blank got a lot of orange that time. But they whistled him for the foul. Well, you know what? They gave it to Peter Young, who just came off the bench. Boy, that poor guy can't avoid getting a foul, can he? <laughs> he fouled out of about nine games, I think. He has fouled out of nine games. I wonder what the record is for games fouled out of in the year. Nine's a big number. And then when you look at the minutes he plays, he's certainly getting a lot of fouls in a short period of time. Ten points now for Mike Breeswick. There's Young with a basketball. And Coswell came out to change the shot, and he loses it. Macon. Oh, what a great feed oh, down oh. Yes, sir. Pretty fast that time by Macon with the left hand after the rejection deflection by Dwayne Caldwell. That's in the highlight film. Six points now for Randolph. There's another turnover. This time Kilgore's up there. And the Owls are simply taking George Washington apart right now. They have scored 16 unanswered points, and Temple is up by 11. And John Kuster is going to call timeout here to try and stop the bleeding with 10. Well, they looked like they played together on that play, didn't they? Didn't they, though? He, see, Macon kind of took a glance at him before he got to midcourt and then never looked back at him. He like a good quarterback in football. Look at the turnovers. George Washington, six. And look at the points off of him. Temple really taking advantage of the turnovers, and Patterson almost lost it again. Well, the pressure has really bothered the Colonial. Sydney. Oops. Patterson down near the corner. He's in crap trouble down there. Coswell knocks. I think it was supposed to be a pass attempt out of bounds. It may have been a shot. Boy, no contest there as Patterson tries to take it inside. I'm thinking he's looking to get this one up on the rack, Fred. We'll take a look here. Baseline. Yeah, he's looking at the hole all That's the way. And Coswell says, no, no. That's a shot. So another block for Dwayne Coswell. Coswell, third in the nation in block shots. Coming into this game, he has blocked 82 shots this year now. He has really become a force in the middle for Temple, hasn't he? He really has. He's an intimidator. The shots he doesn't block, he changes. And even more importantly, his development as an offensive player is something that's very positive and has everybody here excited about him. Coswell with two blocks in this game now tonight. Temple has run off 16 straight points, and there's a turnover. Look at Macon just simply outrun everybody to get there. First two points for Martin Macon. Another turnover, another deuce for the Owls. There you can see Max Blank, a local product from George Washington High, just bothered by those leg, leg injuries, just couldn't run down Macon. Near travel, but they say no. Hudak has picked up his dribble. He needs some help. He's got Sidney out of three-point range, steps into the circle, banks a shot in and out. Then Holtz has the rebound. Rejected by Coswell, his third block of the game. Look at Macon, trying to sort him out. Brings it to the top of the circle and gets Kilgore. Three-point range. Holtz battling for the rebound, has it. Well, nice work that time on the offensive board by Holt. The prior possession, the shot was blocked, and good work on the defensive glass that time. 
Patterson, Kilgore defending. Boy, the Colonials just can't find the seam to this zone defense. Now Hudak gets one down, and that breaks a long run by Temple. The Owls had scored 18 straight points in this ball game. Temple finally gets a shot down. Now it's 22, or rather, George Washington gets a shot down. It's now 22 to 11, and Kilgore comes right back with his fourth point of the night for the Owls. Temple really kind of putting on a clinic right now. There's a blocking foul on Macon in midcourt. He and Patterson collide. And Macon picks up his first foul. He, among the other things, Macon is rarely in foul trouble. He's not fouled out of a game this year. Well, he's a smart player. Has excellent savvy court awareness. Knows what's going on at all times on the floor. And he's an excellent athlete, which allows him to be the defensive player he is. But that takes concentration and effort as much as athletic ability. Macon with a kick, the ball out of bounds. You mentioned Randolph was his high school teammate. Randolph has not had nearly publicity since coming here to Temple with him, but he's playing better now. You know, he was the most valuable player in the state tournament when they were juniors. He's one of those behind-the-scenes type guys. He does all the dirty work, can really get inside, has a knack for getting to the offensive board. He's not a rips and glitch guy, but he can get it done. There's Jones with a little left-handed baby hook, can't get it down. Holtz takes it back in, throws it up, and he gets fouled. I should mention, when I say that he's the MVP in that tournament, that Martin Macon was hurt and not playing, but still, <laughs> he stepped forward and did his job. But well, that just shows you what kind of player he can be. Here's nice penetration and dish by Patterson to Jones. Deflection that time by Caldwell. Here's Holtz on the offensive board. Just kind of flips it up, knew there was contact, and drew the foul shot opportunity. Coswell going for his third block of the night, got his first foul instead. Kent Holtz on the line, and the free throws all over the rim, but it falls. Holtz, a 6'11 freshman from Zaverna Park, Maryland. There's John Kuster talking to Rodney Patterson, his point guard, trying to encourage him. Patterson's had a tough start to this ball game after hitting a three to start the game. He had ball handling problems. A little pressure now by the, by the Colonial. A one, looks like a 1-2-2. Bill Gore, Macon, Griswick. What a nice pass from Mark Macon. That shot is in and out. And the rebound down to Mike Jones for George Washington. Well, Macon's showing us some passing ability tonight, isn't he? He really is looking to set up his teammates, doing an excellent job of it so far. Rodney Patterson. Holtz from near the corner gets it down. Glenn Holtz goes outside and scores. Well, if the door is closed inside, why not step outside if you've got that kind of touch for a big guy? You know Coswell doesn't want to come out that far away from the basket. Nice touch display by Clint Holt. You talked about the youth on this George Washington team. Couple that with the fact they have three strong transfer students that will be playing next year and three good freshmen signed. Number Ellis number McKinney future. coming back. And you have to think that the future is much brighter. Oh, no question about it. The future is certainly a lot brighter for these Colonials, but that doesn't do a whole lot for these guys right now. They're in the present and, and dealing with the 1-19 season, and they'd like to try to put together a couple wins. You mentioned Ellis McKinney. He's from here, went to George Washington High School, wanted me to put in a hello to mom and dad for him. Sidney, Patterson, look at Macon staying with him. Patterson hits the deck, loses the ball. Harden able to save it up to Macon, and Macon missed the jam. Here comes Sidney right back. Drops it off nicely to Jones. Back to Sidney in the lane. And he gets it stripped in there. Randolph had a hand on it. Hudock takes it up. It goes straight in the air as he lost the grip on the ball. And it's going to be George Washington basketball after a wild melee down there. <laughs> Ooh. That was a little crazy in there. Nobody could quite come up with the basketball. I like what Sidney did, though. He tried to show the ball. And that's what you have to do against the shot blocker. He and Hudock both tried to use a ball fake to lift the Wayne Caldwell. And you have to do that when a guy's going after every shot inside. But Temple very aggressive on the defense. Hudock from the deep corner, short with a three. And Coswell tipped the ball. It's off of Holt's hand now and out of bounds. It'll belong to Temple. Boy, I'm not so sure if that ball didn't go off Dwayne Coswell. Holt did an excellent job to get inside rebounding position. From where I said it looked like Coswell got a hand on it, but they're going the other way. Harden. Reeswick. Macon off the baseline. And Jones had the rebound and taken away in there. And Sean Randolph goes up and scores his eighth point of the night. He's very close to his high point game of the year. Ten is the most he's scored in a game this year. And he has eight already tonight. Well, he's just got that knack of slipping and sliding inside, finding those offensive boards. 
Boy, Temple's aggressive on defense. They really are. That's been the difference. That's been the reason they've been able to build an 11-point lead. Sidney Jones, oh, nice speed inside to Holtz, and he missed the shot. Has his own rebound. Coswell blocked the second one, but he was fouled when the shot went in the air. And do you think the presence of Coswell had something to do with Holtz missing inside? Oh, Fred, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just a wee bit. Well, well you know, you're so aware of him, then, aren't you? This is an excellent pass this time by Mike Jones. Look away pass inside the hole. Gets it up, just kind of short-armed it a bit, but stays right with it. I'm impressed with Clint Holtz here tonight. He's doing a bang-up job inside. Maybe hasn't produced as much, but he's doing a good job. Oh, man. Oh, what a play by Mark Macon. See what he just did? Oh, yeah, that's, that's court awareness, though, in Savvy Fred. He knew he wasn't going to be able to come up with it, or he could have come up with it, but instead he got his teammate a layup just with the tap over his head. That's a great play by Macon. What a great play. Nine turnovers charged to George Washington now. Temple up by 13 points with 5.39 left in the first half. 28-15 outs. They were down nine to four at one time. Jones, he, Macon got a hand on it. And now blocked it by Coswell, his third block, and he saves it to Macon. Randolph on the baseline. Look at Coswell up to tip it, but he can't get it down. And Patterson has the rebound for George Washington. You know, George Washington coming in here really didn't want to play an up-and-down game, but Temple has forced it with their defensive pressure. They forced the turnovers and have been able to get out in the open floor a bit. George Washington really wanted to exercise some, use some of the clock. And there's a foul call cross-court. Boy, Hudak just wrapped his arm around Macon. Here we get a look at it. Hudak knows he can't, well, he loses it now. Oh, man, that's a bear hug. That's a takedown. That's worth two or three points. <laughs> you know, and you can't, we didn't stay with the long enough. Mark Macon, among the other things, pretty good official. He got up off the bench, was calling for an intentional foul over there. I'm not <laughs> sure if he wasn't right there. I think he may have had to call right, too. 4.59 left in our first half. 28-15 Temple. The Macon taking a seat on the bench for a while. Here's, here's Mark Macon. He scored two points in this ball game. He's put on a marvelous display of basketball. Yeah, that's a great thing about basketball. You don't have to score a lot of points to really be a factor. And he's certainly been dominant out there on the floor despite only having two points. Great passes, excellent defensive work by Macon and his Temple teammates, and that's why they're on top by 13. And you know, box scores can be deceiving because tomorrow morning somebody will pick up the paper and see that he had two points maybe in the first half and say, well, he had a bad first half. He's had a great first half, hasn't he? Outstanding first half. John Kuster talking to Phil Bova, who was ref from Big Ten game this year and went way back when I was a member of the Big Ten, I remember Phil Bova. It's a veteran crew here tonight, Mickey Crowley and Jerry Donaghy, along with Phil Bova, working this game. Patterson in the trap at midcourt, he'll go all over, he knocked the ball loose, and now Mike Harden runs it down, and Harden gets the layup. They are just all over George Washington defensively. Well, i tell you what, Rodney Patterson needs to try to keep the ball in the middle of the floor. The sidelines work as another defender when you're playing this type of scramble defense, and the defense wants you to take it to the sideline. Oh, what a nice shot by Glenn Sidney, and he was fouled by Mike Bracewick, the first on Bracewick. Glenn Sidney gets his eighth point in the ball game. He hit two threes very early in the game. Sidney scratching the surface, showing you what he's capable of doing as a basketball player. That time, put it on the floor all the way to the cup with the left hand and drew the foul. This kid's going to be a player. Works extremely hard at his game. He's a youngster. Just a sophomore, a 6'6 guard with quickness. 31-17 Temple. Harden to the top of the circle to Breeswick. Breeswick near the circle is fouled as they try to get a shot in the air. And they got Peter Young. That'll be the second foul on Peter Young tonight. Well, he's kind of a marked man. You mentioned earlier he's already fouled out of nine games this year. Ernest Pollard set to come back in the lineup now. For Temple. And Sean Randolph will come out of there. And Randolph gave him some good minutes. He sits down with eight points. Randolph. Breswick. Leading the Atlantic 10 in free throw percentage. 88% shooter. Three for three tonight. He doesn't hesitate up there, does he? <laughs> and he I gets miss. right up, right up and down. 32-17 Temple now. 4:07 left in the first half. Jones. Ooh, D, D, right here. 
Carswell with a strong rebound, hands the ball to Michael Harden. Kilgore. Harden steps inside the three-point line and sticks it to. Michael Harden has seven points in this ball game tonight. He has not shot the ball well this year, but he has tonight. Well, they really backed off of him that time, and as a, as a guard, you, oh, another turnover, as a guard, you have to stick that 15-footer. Gilgore has a block from behind by Holster right into the hands of Ernest Pollard, and he gets his fourth point, and that's how it's going for George Washington right now. 19-point lead for Temple. And you know what? Holst tried to throw it to a substitute. J.J. Hudock was moving near the, the scorer's table, reporting to come into the game, and Holt saw it and threw the ball to it. And out of bounds, when we come back, it'll be Temple basketball. If things go wrong, nothing goes right. Holt's going to see Hudock moving near the scorer's table there, seam, <laughs> and tries to throw the ball to him, and out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you what, they've had a tough time dealing with the pressure on the floor, so they figured maybe they could get it up the court by going out of bounds with the pass. So another turnover, 13 of them now for George Washington. Look at that, Temple has scored 20 points off of those 13 turnovers. They've really taken advantage of them. They've really capitalized, and that's one of the things that sets Temple apart from other teams in the Atlantic 10. They will capitalize on the opposition's mistakes. Kilgore. Pollard near the baseline, turnaround, jump shot short. Holtz goes up and claims the rebound for George Washington. Now to Sydney, and this time Temple backs the pressure off. 2.55 left in the first half. Young to Sydney. Colonials down by 19. Hudak. Young in the lane, Jones. Sydney top of the circle. Loses the ball. 14 turnovers. And now George Washington's going to get it back, and this time. Sidney was going to take it to the bucket, and he was fouled by Nick Kilgore. Second foul on Kilgore. Here we go, Sidney trying to penetrate. The lane closes off. He kicks it off his foot. Kilgore momentarily comes up with it, but Hudak retrieves it, gets it to Sidney. This was going to be a powered tomahawk jam if he could have got it, but Kilgore came from behind and stripped the ball and drew the pick up the foul. Glenn Sidney has eight points in this ball game. He's missed his only free throw attempt tonight. Nine points for Glenn Sidney. 2.37 left in the first half, and Temple has doubled George Washington. 36-18 the score at the moment. Michael Harden. Back to Breeswick. Gilgore. Harden from three-point range. It's his first miss tonight. He's three for four, but Pollard saves the rebound. Breeswick from three-point range. Good. That's his third three of the night, and he has 14 points in this first half. Boy, the Colonials just really haven't gotten to him. He's had all day long to shoot it from there. And heck, Fred, you probably could knock him down with the time he's had behind that arc tonight. Well, I wouldn't bet a lot of money that for <laughs> you. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, I'd take the shot. <laughs> Two minutes, three seconds left in first half. 39-19. Boy, Temple's defense has just been stifling. They just haven't really allowed the Colonials to probe inside and get anything going towards the basket. Everything has been under duress and pressure. Their hands have been active as, as, their, as have their feet. And they just really made it tough for the Colonial. Nice move. Oh, nice work by Mike Jones down the baseline. Jones gets his first two points of the game. Nice penetration in this that this that time by Sydney, and they need a little more of that. That's the kind of diet they need. The Colonials get inside, make some penetration, and then serve it up to somebody for an easy shot. Race looks three, a little too strong. Holtz claims the rebound and gives to Glenn Sydney with 121 left in the first half. Young, that's a three for Peter Young. His first points of the ball game. Well, he's coming off a 20-point night in the last ball game. Bruce Wick, Harden, 54 seconds left in the first half, 25 on the shot clock, Harden for a three. He missed everything, but right underneath to pick it off. And get it back up and in. 
was Lamont Farrell. Lamont Farrell joined this squad late. And he just took advantage of a missed shot to score. Hudak. Lamont Farrell gets the hand on it. To Harden. Harden opening the circle. Boy, he had Mick Kilgore wide open. And Kilgore can't understand why he didn't get the rock. Young. Hudak. Holtz down inside. And he's going to be called for a travel as he tried to get it to the baseline with 16 seconds left in the half. 41-24, Temple. Well, George Washington with 16 turnovers in the first half of this game. Temple with only three. Temple averaging under nine turnovers a game for the year has turned it over only three times in the first half of this one tonight. They have been under 10 turnovers a year for the last three seasons. Pollard shot blocked in there that time by Jones. And Young launches a throw from the other end, and he almost got it up in the balcony. That's the end of one half of action here at McGonagall Hall tonight, and it's been all Temple in the first half. At the end of the half, Temple 41, George Washington 24. Here tonight, scouting Temple. You wouldn't know very much about their <laughs> offense, really, but I think you'd be terrified of the defense. Oh, no question about it. That's been the story of this first half. Temple has been able to just suffocate the Colonials with excellent full court and half court pressure. They really haven't had to run in the offense, Fred. They've been able to get a bunch of scoring opportunities off their defense. We mentioned Mark Macon earlier. He has a couple of points here at halftime. Really hasn't tried to score much in the first half. Hasn't scored very much. His box score won't look like very much, but what a first half he had. He really, he's shown you his court awareness, his savvy. He's made some excellent passes. Really has been content just to kind of run the show. And he's done an excellent job defensively. He's been very active and kind of initiated that pressurized defense that Temple displayed in the first half. George Washington got it started nicely. They hit three threes to start the game and got up to nine to four lead. But then when Temple put the, the full court pressure on him, it really just took him apart. Yeah, it really just slowed off any confidence they had, choked him off right away the pressure defense did it and from that point on Temple has been able to get easy scoring opportunities because of the turnover so Temple coming from that 9-4 deficit went racing off to 18 straight points and now they have the big lead at halftime on Sunday February 12th at 4 30 p.m. we'll be back in Philadelphia as the Duquesne Dukes take on the Temple Owls be sure to join us for more exciting Atlantic 10 Conference basketball Sunday February 12th at 4.30 p.m. Again, we're at halftime here at McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia. Temple 41. George Washington 24 are scored. We'll be back with more half. George Washington 41 to 24 with the Owls having put on that defensive clinic in the first half here. There is a stirring in the east in the Atlantic 10. Just outside New York City down in Pescataway, New Jersey. Bob Wenzel has Rutgers on the move. Let's take a look at the score. Philadelphia. Temple comfortable with that 17-point lead. We have more halftime activities for you. We'll be back. Again, it's a 17-point lead to Temple here at halftime. The Owls taking care of business quite nicely here in the first half of this basketball game. And Temple's very impressive. Competition aside, they really took it to their opponent here tonight. Well, that's what you want to do when you're a dominant team. You've got a team that struggled all year long. You don't want to give them a chance to fuel their confidence. And Temple, after that slow minute and a half, two minutes early, really came out and attacked them aggressively with the pressure defense. Here in the early going, we see Sidney as he knocked down a three-pointer early. The Owls got off to a good start, made three straight three-pointers, but that was about as good as it got for them. Here's Dwayne Caldwell changing the shot, deflecting it. Now here we have coming up here at the other end a sweet feed from Mark Macon to his ex-high school teammate Sean Randolph. No look, left hand right off the dribble. Great catch by Randolph and the easy deuce. Rieswick doing what he loves to do over half of his shots come from behind this arc. And he's well behind it here and just pulls up after one dribble. Swish. So again, Temple with a 17-point lead in halftime here. And both ball clubs back on court. Atlantic 10 Conference Basketball is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. The great American road belongs to Buick. By Pepsi and your local Pepsi-Cola bottlers. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Again, Temple with that huge lead here at halftime, up by 17 points. Let's take a look at first half statistics and see how lopsided it is from the statistical standpoint. It'll be in one area, turnovers and points off of. 
field goal shooting, not that much different, except the Temple has hit twice as many. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge difference there, no doubt. They've taken 17 more shots through those turnovers. Free throwing, just about the same. Three-point shooting. Well, George Washington hit those first three threes that they tried tonight and finished four for eight in the first half. Pretty good, actually. Rebounding even. So where's the difference in the ball game? Well, you're going to find it here in just about a minute, right here. <laughs> 15 to 2. Temple turned it over only two times in the first half. George Washington, 15. And look at the points off the turnovers, Park. That's it. That's 18-point differential. We've got a 17-point ball game. There it is, right there in front of you. And the fast break points, which a lot of them, of course, coming off those turnovers. But it's really defense that made it happen for Temple here. No doubt about it. You don't have to be a brain surgeon to figure that one out. If you watch this first half, they've really forced turnovers. George Washington scoring leaders, Glenn Sidney with 10 points, Holtz had four, and Patterson Young each three. For the Owls, Mike Breeswick had 14 first half points, Randolph eight, Harden seven, and back to Mark Megan for a minute. He had two points in the first half and played a great first half. He really did, passed the ball well. He was really the catalyst defensively as he is out on one of the wings in that three, two, came up with a bunch of steals in that first half. As a matter of fact, Megan came up with three of Temple's 11 steals in that first half. Mark, you know a kid love, like Mark Megan loves to score, but I'm going to bet if you could talk to him right now, he'd say, hey, I had a great time in the first half of this basketball game. Anytime you're a good player, you want to try to do everything well, and you like to be recognized for... <laughs> oh, well. Nothing wrong with being recognized for a two-hand dunk <laughs> in everybody's face, as Dwayne Caldwell did that. Here we go. We get a baseline. Look at it. This squares up. One bounce, two hands. Hudak and Holtz there, but Caldwell just too strong. The foul was called on Hudak, his second personal foul. Coswell picks up his first three points of this ball game tonight. He had four blocks in the first half. Now he has three points. And there's Jones in the trap at midcourt. Kilgore and Pollard had him trapped. Now they take it down low to Holtz. Breeswick shuts him off. Coswell gets his fifth block of the night. Good helping defense. Jones picks it up, shots in and out, holds again, got the ball stripped at the baseline, and now a foul called on Temple. The boy Temple helping out on the baseline part, getting it all done. They're very, very aggressive at the defensive end. I mean, they're moving their feet, they're in good position. Coswell, he can make it all work because he can change and block shots. And here we look at the um, rejection row, and there we have <laughs> symbolic of five blocks by Coswell tonight. But I tell you what, I've been really impress impressed with Clint Holt. He's only got four points, but he's at six rebounds. Make it seven after that one. Kind of short arm that free throw. Here's the block by Coswell. Clint Holt stays right with it, but Coswell really doing the job inside. Holt has six rebounds in this game. Mark, if you were coaching him, probably one thing you might want to tell him is, and he's a young player, this happens to him, when you get the ball, take it right to the bucket a little more aggressively. Well, with a shot block, you really have to not allow that shot blocker to have any space between you and the ball. You need to get your body up against his and take away that advantage he has. And Clint Holtz, a young player, is going to learn that in time. It's just tough to um, learn it on the job. Macon, three-point try, loops it in and out, rebound to Jones. Here comes George Washington, down by 19 points. Second half just underway here in Philadelphia. George Washington goes home on Saturday to face St. Bonaventure in what will be their homecoming games. So don't play football. Patterson shot off the front of the rim. Gets his own rebound off the floor near the corner. And Macon deflected that. Temple stays home to play Duquesne here on Sunday. And we'll have that game for you along the Atlantic 10 Network. Sydney for three. Strong rebound to Jones, can't find any room to work, and Coswell gets his sixth block. Holtz gets his seventh rebound, and he's fouled as he gets it up. Strong effort, both sides. Boy, oh, great effort that time defensively by Coswell. Nice work that time by Mike Jones inside to create some space. But here you see him just hemmed up, and Coswell times it perfectly. But Holtz, who's done a nice job on the offensive glass, just kind of flicks that one up after contact's initiated to draw the foul. They got seven blocks for Dwayne Coswell in this game now. He came into this game third in the nation in blocks. He now has 88 blocks on the season. Boy, there are a lot of teams in college basketball that, that don't have that many blocks, Fred. Yeah, you're right. Holtz picks up his seventh point of the night. 
And he's a 6'11 freshman. Free throw in and out. And Coswell claims the rebound. Jones hammered him from behind. <laughs> they call. Oh, they really let him play a little bit tonight. Not a lot of whistles blown. Mark Macon just decided it was time right. to get a couple of points. And so he got a couple of points. Boy, the Owls going to stay in their pressure. 2-1-2. Two, two. Macon in the middle playing the monster back of the rover, if you will. In the second half, Rutgers with a 12-point lead over Duquesne. And Rhode Island leading UMass. Boy, Rhode Island's on the move right now, Clark. I tell you what, they're a team to watch come tournament time. They're playing very, very well. Holtz takes the rebound away from his teammate, J.J. Hudak, and scores his eighth point of the night. You know, tournament time coming up. It's time to look at dark horses. You have to think that Rhode Island's at West Virginia up by nine over Marshall at halftime in Charleston. Rhode Island would be a dark horse. There's Reeswick with another three. I kind of like Penn State as a dark horse. Oh, I think so. I think you're exactly right. Those two teams, Rhode Island, with the personnel they have, very capable of getting hot and coming up with some wins. I'll give you one more. Rutgers. Certainly with their style of play, if they get it going, it'll be an interesting postseason tournament. We had a 10-second violation in backcourt is what happened. But the tournament time is so exciting. Of course, the format this year, they'll begin the tournament in Philadelphia, and then the championship game will be played on the home court of the highest seeded remaining team. For West Virginia right now, unbeaten in conference play, but they even have to get into the championship game to host it. Well, there we go. Look at John Kuster having a tough season. 19 of those 69 losses administered this year, but he still keeps plugging away him and his staff and his players. Brighter days are certainly ahead. You can see bright days ahead for this conference. Kilgore, oh, he did a great job of getting that shot off after the foul occurred. 16.55 left in this game. Here's Kilgore with, the, Kilgore with the dribble penetration in the lane. He's got hit that time by Sidney. Sidney actually grabbed his left hand, so Mick was still able to get it up with the right hand. Second foul on Glenn Sidney. Mick Kilgore has a half dozen points tonight. He's a smooth, versatile player. Can do a lot. Can handle the ball. Not a bad shooter. He's going to be a pretty good player. Freshman. He'll develop into a solid all-around player in this time. He's the only guy other than Breeswick and Macon to lead Temple in scoring this year. Yeah, I was talking about dark horses come tournament time. You're going to see a team on Sunday, Duquesne, that when the season started, a lot of people ranked them as a dark horse in this league, too, so they could still be dangerous. Kilgore gets a clean steal. The freshman to the bucket had it knocked loose and stolen by Patterson, and here we go the other way. Right now, George Washington just content to try to milk every possession for a good shooting opportunity, and I'm sure Coach Kuster just wants good execution and good effort. He knows it's going to take a miracle for them to get back into it. Wants them to cut down their turnovers, move the ball, and execute their offense against the zone. Yeah, good point, Clark. If you can't come back and win the game, at least put together a strong second half and try to build on that. Exactly right. No question. I'm sure that's what the coaching staff and the players, well, the players certainly would like to try to get back into it, but they realize it's an uphill battle. Peter Young, three-point country. Got it. Peter Young from the deep corner. There's a freshman, or rather a sophomore, getting a shot down. Another one of the strong young players. Six points tonight for Peter Young on a couple of three-point goals. 51-31. And a foul against Peter Young, and that's his third foul. Here Pollard strongly to the basket, two hands. Young got there just a little too late. Picked up the foul. You got to close off that lane. You got to get to the to the strong side from the weak side a little quicker. Young late and picks up the foul. Ernest Pollard on the line for the first time tonight, a 70% free throw shooter. And he has five points tonight. Frank, we're talking about tournament time as you approach that. That's really kind of the third season of, of the basketball season. You have the non-conference, then the conference season. Boy, in a tournament time, you'll see some teams get refreshed and really take advantage of that second chance. Well, there are a lot of th things that can happen when you get to tournament time, maybe a key player has been injured and he's able to get back into the lineup. You're playing well at the end of the season. You've got some momentum and confidence. You realize it's a new beginning and you kind of disregard what's happened prior to that as Sidney knocks down the, the long range shot. Um, so it gives everybody a new outlook and sometimes teams can get hot over the course of a tournament schedule. Coswell jams it and he has five points. 
Rutgers leading Duquesne 74-72 by two points with 43 seconds left. Sir, if you think tournament time can't rejuvenate you, I'll mention two things. North Carolina State and Kansas winning national championships. Two pretty good examples right there. 15-19 left in this one. Time out here. Take care of business here. They still lead by 20 points with 15-19 left. Look at this play. Just over the top. Young again, late from the weak side. Went for the steal, didn't get it. And Caldwell dunked home too. The defense for that play is to have the basketball down to the other end of the floor. The points off turnovers for Temple here tonight. Breeze with three. And he has 20 points in this contest. PA announcer here, he refers to those shots as three bangers. <laughs> <laughs> He's banged a bunch of them in tonight. Huda. Boy, the pressure has really bothered George Washington. As you might expect, a young team that struggled as they have during the course of this season on the road. Patterson, that's how he started the game tonight. Rodney Patterson has hit two buckets. He got the first shot of the game from three-point range to fall, and now he hits that one. Again, the 20-point lead to Temple with 14.38 left in the game. Hubbard, Coswell, double-teamed on the baseline. Now triple-teamed, and Patterson got a hand on the ball. Saved inbounds, though. Oh, and look at that. Mark Macon get it down to Kilgore in the corner. Back outside it comes to Mark Macon again. Got to be fun to look around and realize you're wearing the same uniform as Mark Macon. <laughs> <laughs> He's on your side. We can do so many things for you. Hey, one thing he can do is got to make you feel good and get open, and you know you're going to get the ball. Yeah, that always helps when you know you got a guy that's going to handle the ball as much as he does as Mike Jones gets in for Peter Young. Um, if you get open, a guy like him who's going to get a lot of ball handling responsibilities is willing to give it up, then you work that much harder to get open. Hello, Mark Macon. Six points for Mark Macon off another steal. Well, he missed one earlier because he lost control of the ball. That time he made sure. Hudak, double team. I really don't think George Washington needs to keep that ball away from the sideline. I mentioned it earlier in the first half simply because that acts as another defender. You need to get somebody in the middle of the floor, make good crisp bounce passes, and also you need to use some dribble penetration. Sidney, Hudak, ball knocked loose by Coswell, saved by Jones. Sydney's three is in and out, and there's a foul against Max Plank. His first personal foul. Mark Macon has five steals in this game. He comes in averaging three a game, so here we go. Just a telegraph pass, I mean. Boy, Macon read that one beautifully. Sydney didn't do a good job of disguising where he was going with the ball. And there you go with another steal for Macon. Making in the lane. Hey, what if he decides to get some points, he gets them too. That's eight points tonight for Mark Macon. He hasn't even tried to score. 61-37 Temple. 13-03 left in the game. Max Blank down the lane. And Coswell is going to draw the foul. That's where you have to attack the pressure. You've got to get the ball to the middle of the floor because that way you force the defense to scramble a little bit. Otherwise, you here we go from the wing here. Nice little pass inside to the middle of the floor to Max Blank. And he penetrates inside and goes right into Dwayne Coswell's body, although they called the foul on Breezewick. Yeah, Breezewick reached him and got him before Coswell hammered him. So it's not the foul on Coswell. That's Blank's free throw. No. Well, he struggled the line, shooting 48% at the free throw line this year. He's been bothered by that bad hamstring. Young saves the rebound, puts up a shot, and gets it. Peter Young has eight. Well, we talked about how this guy has fouled out of 9 of 20 games and how he banged his body, but he's displayed a nice shooting touch here tonight, and he's coming off a 20-point game against St. Joe's, so he gets a little more offensive-minded and less aggressive with the fouls. He could be a contributor offensive. Followed off the baseline. Young chases the rebound down, hands it to Rodney Patterson, and Temple backs the pressure off now. We're back in the zone. That's what they played all game long for the 3-2 in the half court. They've been very active with it. Mark Macon on one of the wings. Well, he covers some ground over there, doesn't he? He really does. He covers a lot of space. Great range and quickness. Hudak. Three. Won't go. 
Mike Jones takes the rebound in. I think Coswell got a hand on that one. Hudock trying to save it. Plank down the baseline. Jones and Coswell got another hand on him. He's going to be called for a foul this time. But well, the coaching staff up off, the, up off the bench, they feel as though Coswell has bumped people on a few other blocks here tonight, but that time good pump, good work in there by Mike Jones to draw the foul. You know, Clark, if you look at how quick Macon is on the one wing of that zone and Coswell's intimidation and his presence down inside, that doesn't leave you too many areas to shoot the ball from. <laughs> he really doesn't. It makes it tough, and we've seen how effective it can be when you don't attack it well offensively, but again, you're forced into that situation because they're so active and they have the shot blocking presence of Dwayne Caldwell, the last line of defense. Mike Jones, three points tonight. Well, we haven't heard from J.J. Hudock tonight. He's an outstanding stand, stand still shooter, but really hasn't had an opportunity to get up many shots. No, he hasn't at that. Four points now for Mike Jones. Atlantic Tech Conference Basketball is brought to you in part by Ford and Josephs and Monroe Brown of Penn State. Share Atlantic 10 Conference Freshman of the Week honors. Amos averaged 25 points and five rebounds in three games last week for St. Josephs and scored a career-high 33 points against St. Bonaventure. Brown averaged 21 points, six rebounds, and four assists in two games for Penn State, scoring a career-high 22 against Rutgers. Congratulations to Craig Amos and Monroe Brown, the Atlantic 10 co-freshman of the week. Two pretty good players right there. Two more reasons why we say the future's pretty bright in this conference. 11.58 left in this basketball game. Field goal shooting, second half. Boy, Temple 7 for 11. They've really been efficient. Very efficient. They capitalized on the turnovers at a high rate. And in their half-court game, they've been able to get the kind of shots they want and make them. Kilgore, Breezewick, full court Frazier from George Washington. Back to Kilgore. Well, they're going to try to free up Macon and get him some points here as Kilgore takes over the ball handling duties. And now there's a foul. Blank and Coswell were tangled up down there, and Max Blank has been whistled for his second foul. They had Rodney Patterson chasing Coswell, or chasing Macon then. And you look at that matchup, Macon is 6-5. Rodney Patterson 6-1. Well, I tell you what, there have been a lot more physical fouls than the one just called on Max Blank here tonight that have gone uncalled, but that's how it goes sometimes. Bracewick rings up another three. He has six three-point goals in this game tonight and 23 points. <laughs> Threeswick. Threeswick, you're right. <laughs> I like that. Well, somebody actually had a had a card, a flash card with that in the stands here at McGonagall Hall. He is six for eight from three-point range in this game. 23-point lead to Temple with 11-27 left in the game. Well, Patterson got in the air and threw a dangerous pass to Hudak. Now to Blank. Jump hook. Nope. Blank just doesn't have the explosiveness he needs to complete that play inside. Kilgore off the wing. Nick Kilgore picks up his 10th point of the night. And a 25-point lead to Temple. The Owls' biggest lead of the game comes with 11 minutes left to play. Boy, the Owls go back to the pressure now. Oh, there's trouble. Peter Young picked up his dribble and... and same thing that happened earlier to Holtz. That time, Peter Young looked over and saw two substitutes coming in the game and fired it to him. As the old story, guys, we know they're open, but it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's certainly true. You can be open all you want over there at that scores table, but you're not in play. Boswell's going to take it to the bucket, and a nice soft shot goes up and in. Boswell now has seven points. See here, you get a wide shot angle, for excuse me, but nobody in the middle of the floor and the ball being taken up on the sideline, which is certainly playing right into the hands of the defense. Coswell whistle for a foul. That will be his fourth. Coswell paid for that one, I think. He must have caught an elbow to the mouth. Here we get a look at it. That's Mike Jones, big, oh yeah. My goodness. Watch out, Dwayne. He didn't like that at all. He fouled him with his mouth. <laughs> Got his chin in there. Seems to be okay, though. John Randolph is back in the Temple lineup. Down low, turnaround shot, Holtz. Nice tip that time. Mike Jones went up. 
and got the dip in. He has six points tonight. 68-43 Temple with 10-16 left in the game. Colonials go to man-to-man -to -man here. Macon immediately takes Patterson down low. Now pops out to the top of the circle and gets the ball. Oh, what a move. And all of a sudden, got a hand on it, and they're going to call it over and back. Hey, John Cheney on the bench. Mark Macon made a move that went nowhere, but what a quick move. He put on the dribble at the top of the circle. Well, he made it so quick, he had faked the defender out, but he came right back to him. The defender didn't have a chance to really react. He <laughs> made his move so quick. He was still where he left it. <laughs> exactly. Patterson loses it. Macon picks it off in the circle. Macon. Running the break, takes it down the lane. Soft shot up off the heel of the rim. He gets it back. Tried to throw it inside, gets it back again. And takes it to the bucket and scores in his foul. Right now, well, it's been looking this way for a while, but certainly you can tell the Temple a 10 and 2 team in the conference and the Colonials wanted whatever in the conference. They're to pass off Holt, making the only one really knows where it is, picks it up the second time. And just a little leaner. Foul on Mr. Young. Who else? That's his court. He usually gets his nose in there pretty good. Jerome Dowdell in the game now for Temple. Mike Breeswick's going to take a breather here. Breeswick sits down with 23 points. 9.32 left in this game. Mark making to the line. He has 10 points tonight. First time at the free throw line. Magnificent Mark. Free throw misses. And Holtz clears the rebound for George Washington. Well, it's got to be frustrating for these kids at George Washington, for everybody at GW. Tough to lose. Tough to lose and continue to get out here and battle night in and night out and have those kind of things happen to you. You're going one way, a little zig, and the pass was a zag, and there you've got another turnover. Boy, that's tough. Those are just really unforced errors, the kind that you commit yourself. 22 turnovers charged to George Washington tonight. Your Temple has only turned it over three times in this game. They have not had a turnover in the second half. For the last game, they only turned it over three times for the game. So they're capable of really handling the ball, only averaging nine turnovers a game, so they do a good job with the basketball. Making three is good. He now has 13 points. 8.49 left in this contest, and a 30-point lead to Temple. Sydney. Patterson. Young back to Patterson, and he walked. No turnovers in this ball game. George Washington has committed 23, Temple only three, and look at the points off turnovers, Park. 32 points to two. That's the stamp on this game. It's the difference in the game right now. 30 points difference. Get the ball! Get the ball! Get the ball! J.J. Hudock is back in the game now for George Washington. Nick Kilgore handling the ball for Temple. Hudock with him. Macon. Sydney guarding him. <laughs> Macon and Sydney trying to gain a little advantage down along the baseline. And let's see who they got for the foul. I think it was Mike Jones trying to help out as Macon came over and was going off a pick. Jones probably tried to cross body block him a little bit. Got whistle for the foul. That'll send Macon to the strike. Sydney put a hand on Macon down on the baseline and Macon swatted that hand like it was a pest. Just whacked him. Any good offensive player knows he's going to be hand-checked a little bit. And usually he'll let the defender know that you're not supposed to touch me out here. There's Mike Harden coming back in the ball game now for Temple. Nick Kilgore. Out Rodney Patterson back in, replacing Peter Young for George Washington. Boy, Patterson's had a tough night handling the ball. The pressure really has affected him as the point guard. And then that's... A, that's you know, that's where you miss an experienced point guard like an Ellis McKinney, club's leading scorer, arguably their best player, and he's out for the season. It really makes it tough for a young freshman to come in and handle the type of pressure Patterson's seen tonight. I think you make a good point, Clark. It'd obviously be a much different team with him. A steadying influence, a good ball handler, and maybe solve problems. He just saw it right there. 7.39 left in the game. Temple doing it all right so far. 
Macon, can you get it? Yadell chased it down. Macon loose again. Puts up the jumper, short with a try. Holtz has the rebound. Macon starting to take a few shots now that he's got this thing under control. <laughs> it's been under control for a while. Just a matter of by how many. Patterson, three-point shot on the rim and off. And Jones with a strong tip came over the pack to get it. And he now has eight points tonight. Well, I tell you, he and Clint Holtz have really banged and crashed and thumped and bumped inside. Really to no avail because the turnovers have been the dominant factor in this one. Clint Holtz has 11 rebounds for George Washington. Macon, quick move. Nice pass to Dowdell to turn down the shot. Jones has eight rebounds and holds 11 for George Washington. They've been strong on the boards for the Clones. Oh, Harden with a nice pass to Jerome Dowdell. Three-point shot is short, but Harden really set him up nicely. That's what penetration will do. If you can beat your man just a little bit, that forces the whole defense to react, and usually you can get somebody open on the kickout pass. Patterson, Hudak, Jones, knock loose, taken away by Harden. Patterson with him on the drive, and the shot good by Michael Harden. Nine points for Michael Harden. Sydney to Huda. Patterson. Well, it's a bad spot. They take it near the timeline and the out-of-bounds drive, and the track arrives almost immediately, doesn't it? Boy, oh, there's a pass thrown to a J.J. Hudak, who didn't even know where it was coming from. They had no idea the pass was coming. Lamont Farrell, number 44, checks back in for Temple. John Randolph out. Hudak is out now for George Washington. Max Blank has replaced him. Look at the fast break points in this ball game. Temple, the 23-point cushion there. Dowdell shoots and misses. Ball out of bounds. It belongs to George Washington. Well, those Dump. fast break points, Fred, are just the limb of the tree of turnovers tonight. That's a, just an extension of those turnovers. Official first signal, George Washington ball, and then changed. It was off the hands of Clint Holtz. Defense has made the whole thing for Temple, hasn't it? Been the key. You can stamp defense all over this one, Fred. Harden. Time is called. Temple called a timeout right there with 4.43 left in the game. 83-46 Temple. Dan Cheney didn't keep his club at the bench very long. Now Harden going over to shake Glenn Sidney's hand. I'll tell you what happened. There was a little incident. Sidney got upset with Harden, who's standing right behind him at the top of the key. And John Cheney called time out and called him over as if to say, what were you talking about? And don't cause any trouble out there now. We've got 4.43 left and we're way ahead in this ball game. So when it came back, Harden went over and shook Sidney's hand. Sidney gets the free throw. Sidney now has 11 points tonight. So a little extracurricular activity, nothing serious at all. An interesting little by play. And now that's only the fourth turnover tonight, charge to Temple. The ball was through Dowdell's hands. John Cheney, you think he isn't a complete coach? His club is up by 36. He's calling timeouts, pointing out things that he doesn't want him to do, drawing diagrams on his side, and that's why he's such a good coach. 83-49, Temple now after the basket. Rodney Patterson picked up his eighth point of the night. Mike Harden, Perl, Lamont Perl, double team. And a foul is going to go against Mike Jones. That'll be his third. Little huddle by the George Washington Ball Club down in the lane. Michael Harden walking over toward the bench to see what words of wisdom John Cheney might have for him. And Lamont Farrell will go to the free throw line all by himself, I might add, because John Cheney doesn't often put players up on the line. Well, no need to now. Farrell looking to add to his average here. Holtz with the uncontested rebound. Four minutes left in the game. Patterson to Max Blank from three-point range, and he nailed it. Max Blank picks up his first points of the night. And now Blank makes a run on Lamont Farrell and fouls him. And that's the third foul on Max Blank. Max 
final tonight, Rutgers defeated Duquesne 79-74 in Atlantic 10 Conference play. Rutgers has been playing very well. Boy, Bob Wenzel has got that program headed in the right direction, doesn't he? There's a lot of excitement and emotion involved. He was an outstanding player when he played there and saw him at halftime talking about generating that excitement and enthusiasm and a style of play that's fun to watch for the fans. And from that, you get some solid players into your program and the players that you already have improve and get caught up in it, it can be very positive and productive. In fact, we were there last Sunday, and you really had to like the enthusiasm we saw in, in the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. They had a good crowd in there. They were vocal. They were into the game. Rutgers was playing with some fire and emotion. There's a foul call to see if that basket's going to count. No, this is, the, nope. this is college. In the NBA, that's two, Fred. <laughs> that's a deuce in the NBA. Here we go, Patterson. Those shake stutter step. There's the bump, the cross check. See, that's a hoop in the NBA because as long as you don't dribble it again in the NBA, that's a hoop. But we're in the Atlantic 10. I know that. <laughs> so he's got to go to the line and shoot the one and one. Rodney Patterson is a first foul on Mike Harden. Peter Young is going to re-enter the lineup now for George Washington and Max Blank will come out of there. <laughs> Rodney Patterson. Nine points now, looking to get into double digits here with 3.43 left in the game. And Patterson has 10 points tonight. 3.43 left in this contest. And George Washington goes home Saturday to face St. Bonaventure on their homecoming day. And Duquesne will be here in the Donegal Hall on Sunday to challenge Temple. We'll have that game for you along the Atlantic 10 Network. Lamont Farrell will handle the inbounds pass. Hollard, right back to Farrell. Well, Farrell doesn't exactly play like a guy who just came out here in the middle of the year and joined the squad. He plays under control, doesn't get very excited out there. Mike Jones, and he's fouled. Well, the Colonial still just plugging away, trying to play good, solid, fundamental basketball. Here, Patterson pushes it ahead to the streaking Jones. One dribble into Farrell. Little pump fake showed the ball and drew the foul. I tell you what, he and Hope have done a nice job inside. I mean, you look at the score and you figure how could anybody in the blue and gold have done anything productive. But when you look at what Holtz has done on the backboard, Jones has been in there scrapping and clawing. Well, Holtz with 11 rebounds, Jones with eight. That was the first foul on Lamont Farrell, by the way. There's been a few more rebounds at the Colonial end simply because they haven't shot it quite as well as Temple, haven't gotten the kind of shots that Temple has got. Mike Jones, now with nine points tonight, Max Blank re-enters the lineup, and Holt sits down for George Washington. 30-point lead, Temple, 318 left in this game. Jerome Dudell gives it to Michael Harden. Patterson with him. Harden lost the ball. Picked up by Glenn Sidney. Back to Patterson. Back to Sidney nicely. Good work that time. And Glenn Sidney has 13 points. Good teamwork on the break. And now the Colonials are going to get a timeout here with 3.04 left in the game. Temple with an 85-57 lead here at McGonagall Hall. There's the whole picture right in front of you. 3.04 left in the game. And Temple with a comfortable lead. Now Dell. I'm sure John Cheney would object to this, this terminology, but it's been kind of a form chart victory for Temple here tonight. No question. This is one they should have won, and they've done it in pretty much the fashion most people expect it. Jerome Donnell gets the offensive rebound back up at him, his first two points of the night. And again, the 30-point lead to Temple with 2.39 left in the game. Sydney to Max Blank, top of the circle. And Dell has the rebound. He and Lamont Farrell got a hand on it. Now to Michael Harden. And it's Hubbard. Down low to Sean Randolph. And the Owls kick it right back outside with 2 18 left in the game. Dell likes to shoot at the three point range. He might have had the opportunity there, but he turned it down. Randolph to the bucket. And he's going to be called for a charge. Glenn Sidney had defensive position down along the baseline, and he took a slam. 
Randolph did not slam dunk the basketball. They did slam dunk Sidney. Boy, Randolph's got that sneaky ride, that sneaky jump in the building. <laughs> he doesn't look like he can get up like that, but he's got the long arms and he's you know, he kind of solidly and thickly built. But when he gets around that hole, he'll throw it down on him. Patterson got a screen from Max Blank and picked up his third three-point goal of the game. And now 13 points tonight. And George Washington calls timeout here with a minute 57 left in the game. Temple leading 87 to 60. We'll be right back. Clark, I mentioned a minute ago, I'm sure John Cheney would object to that term form chart victory. He'd say, hey, we had to work hard. They're a good basketball team at Sidner. But it really has been about what you would expect if you looked at the records of the two teams coming in. And you look at the personnel, the experience of Temple, although they too relatively a young club, but in relationship to George Washington, certainly they've got the better personnel, the more experienced team. They're on their home floor. They've got a shot at making it to the NC2A tournament. And they came out here and did what they had to do as the stronger team, and that's dominate. Pollard missed the rebound, the missed Dowdell shot, but Pollard gets it back again, and now he's fouled by Clint Holtz. Boy, Holtz got a little frustrated. Really did some pawing that time at Pollard, but I'm not... Pollard got a piece of Clint Holtz, too, before we'll get a look at all the action underneath. There we are. They got, they're all wrapped up right there. And then Clint Holtz... <laughs> Whacked him about yeah, with three the fly, times. With the fly <laughs> attack on him. <laughs> with the fly attack on him. <laughs> Flogging him down along the baseline when they finally called a halt to it. And Pollard will go to the free throw line. Small reward. There goes Holtz out of the ball game. That was his first foul of the night. He didn't foul out. Peter Young has replaced him. Ernest Pollard to the line. Has five points tonight. Has a half dozen rebounds also. Holtz with some weight work and some experience. He's become a solid center. He's got a nice touch, and he's not afraid to get in there and mix it up. That's obvious. So he's got a chance to be a solid player in this conference. I really like his future. 6'11 freshman with some skills. Sidney. Blank. Finally lets the shot go and hits it. It's a two-point shot. Max Blank with his fifth point of the ball game. Now Harden in backcourt. The ball to Randolph. On up here, Dowdell in the trap. Down low it comes to Farrell, and his shot's good. He's been fouled, and I think they're going to count that one. Max Blank got him, got the field goal. Well, he hasn't had that long of a career, so I, I'll venture to speculate he's looking at a career high here, Fred. Uh, yes, he is. You know what? He had not scored before tonight. He had played a little bit, but he hadn't scored. In fact, he'd only taken one shot before this ball game, and he has nine points in this one. There he is. He gets banged about two or three times. Take your choice, folks. Max Blank, obvious by his expression, it was probably whistled on him. Farrell's free throw doesn't fall. That's kind of too bad. He had a chance to get into double digits. Sidney. Farrell is going to get in double digits with a dunk. 11 points from Amon Farrell. To the deck they go. And no foul. No, no foul, foul call over there. John Cheney looking on very calmly. John Kuster not quite so calmly, but calm. My goodness. Those guys were elevated and both came crashing to the floor. No foul. When they finally do call a foul, it's on Dowdell. Peter Young at the free throw line. Off the front of the rim with it. Terrell chases it down, gives to Harden. Foul on Mike Jones, his fourth. Stops the clock with 30 seconds left in the game. The only thing left to be decided here is the final score. Temple's going to go to 13 and 8 and do 11 and 2 in the Atlantic 10 Conference. George Washington will be 1 and 20 and 1 and 11. Ernest Pollard, six points in this contest. Temple now has matched their highest point total of the year at 93. So this one would establish a new high for the year and does. 94 points for Temple. The most points they've scored in a game this year. Young at midcourt. Pulls up. Gets it back to Patterson. 
Three-point attempt, good. <laughs> Rodney Patterson hits his fourth three of the night. 16 points for Rodney Patterson, his biggest scoring game of the year. And now a foul with 14 seconds left in the game. Michael Harden. Twelve seconds left as Patterson approaches the top of the circle. Fires another three-point jumper. Didn't get it. Jones with another rebound. Nope. And this time the rebound to Sean Randolph. And Randolph fires one the length of the court. And that's the ball game. And Temple has put it away. The Temple Owls win the ball game, 94-65 over George Washington here in Philadelphia. So McGonagall Hall sees the Temple Owls win another one, and we'll be back with post-game activity. Defeat of George Washington, 94-65. Temple picking up their 13th victory of the year, now going to 13-8. and And George Washington with a loss now, 1-20. and Let's go to the court and Clark Kellogg. Well, joining me right now, Mark. joining me right now is Mark Macon. And tonight a game that really was won at the defensive end for you guys. True, true. I think we played defense well today. Up until the, uh, about three minutes on the clock, you know, I think things got kind of lax a days ago. But all in all, we played defense real well. You seem to be the catalyst for that defensive pressure. A guy noted for his offensive effort, but tonight you seem like you turned it up a notch defensively. Well, noted for offensive effort is what, what, what you all say. You know, uh, I came on a, on a defensive effort thing, you know, as far as shooting and scoring, that came from my defense. Tonight, you guys came in here playing against a team that struggled all season long. How tough is it to make sure that you come out and do the same things you would against maybe a team that's a little stronger than a George Washington? Well, it's not tough at all. You know, uh, I think we want to come out and play hard every game, you know, not structured around the team, you know, who's losing or winning, you know, because on any given night, anybody can play well. Your club now looking ahead to the rest of the Atlantic 10 conference season and looking ahead to the tournament. Do you feel like you have to win a certain number of games to have a shot at the NCAA? Well, we want to just take one game at a time uh, and just try to win one at a time and buy one, you know, and so we can get into the NCAAs. But well, we're going to talk with Coach John Chaney right now. Here he comes over here. Coach Chaney, your team came out tonight, was able to exert themselves defensively, and that really was the key to the ball game. Well, I think we put some pressure on them, and uh, they threw the ball away quite a lot. And uh, we didn't let them get into their sets, uh, especially with them being such great outside shooters. They're very good uh, three-point shooters. And uh, our zone had to go out and, uh, and stretch out a little further than we normally do. Is this the kind of effort that you look for from your club to build on as you wind down the Atlantic 10 conference schedule and look forward to the Atlantic 10 tournament? Well, normally at this portion of the year, we try to speed up our tempo a little bit, and we use the pressure uh, to do that. Hopefully, uh, with us playing a lot of zone to protect Dwayne and, and Mark, uh, and keep him out of foul trouble, uh, we do that quite a lot. We put a lot of pressure on the team at this time of the year, but now i got nine players instead of eight, so I can perhaps do it a little bit more. Is that something that you're going to always do in the course of a game, is to try to put that kind of pressure on so you can get more open court, easy basket opportunities? It depends on the team. Some of the teams have, uh, in our conference, have real good ball handlers, and uh, they have real good offensive sets. And, uh, and, and some teams do not have great outside shooters, but when they have great outside shooters, uh, we try to put a little bit more pressure on them. Uh, it's Our pressing. executive producer has... Coach Chaney, congratulations tonight. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Let's go back to Fred White right now. All right, thank you, Clark Kellogg. Again, the final score here. Temple has defeated George Washington 94-6. to